Mental health is not easy to talk about, and Kim Kardashian is trying to break that stigma. She's speaking out on social media for the first time about her husband, Kanye West's battle with bipolar disorder. This condition is pretty complex, and our Nine Health expert, Dr. Powell Coley, joins us live to explain more. Good morning, Dr. Coley. So can you tell us what is bipolar disorder? Uh, good morning, Natasha. So bipolar disorder is a condition that's actually characterized just as it sounds like uh, with two poles. So you're depressed and you're overly excited, which is called mania or hypomania. And there's many different components of hypomania or mania that can be very subtle and important to look out for. So for example, people can have pressurized speech or wanting to talk and get their words out quickly. There can be a lack of sleep that's that people don't need to sleep more than two or three hours and feel energized. There can be grandiose thoughts. You can think that the president is reaching out to you or the national security agency is reaching out to you to look for information. There can also be erratic behavior in the sense that you're making poor business decisions, going on shopping sprees, spending a lot of money, and there can be distractibility. So we're pretty used to seeing the symptoms of depression, but mm -hmm. those hypomania or manic symptoms can sometimes be more subtle and people can just look like they're inspired or motivated when actually they're are having a bipolar disorder. Is this common and who does it affect? It is more common than you would expect, actually. So the lifetime prevalence of this disorder is one to three percent. It equally affects men and women. And it, you know, usually comes on the mean age of onset of symptoms is about 18 to 20 years. But surprisingly, because it can be subtle, a lot of people don't get diagnosed until much later in life. And, and the World Health Organization actually puts bipolar disorder ahead of breast cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia, and many other types of dementias as a cause of morbidity and mortality because it's it's difficult to diagnose early. So then, um, you know, how is it diagnosed? There are criteria for diagnosing it. So as I talked about those two poles, you have to have depressive symptoms and you do have to have hypomanic or manic symptoms. Now, there's four different subtypes of bipolar disorders and there's different criteria for each of those four subtypes. But essentially you have to have those two components and they're not driven by drugs or anything else that you might be using mm -hmm. and they're impairing your functioning. And assuming you have all of those, you get this diagnosis. Is this a genetic condition? It is. We're learning more and more about it. And what we're seeing based on family studies and twin studies is that it probably isn't one gene that accounts for it, but actually a number of small genes that add up together to lead to the condition. So if you look at twin studies, if you have an identical twin that has bipolar disorder, you have a 40 to 70 percent chance of having it in your lifetime. And if you have a first degree relative like a parent or a sibling or a child that has bipolar disorder, your chance is about five to 10 percent of having bipolar. All right, Dr. Coley, appreciate you coming on and talking to us about that.